In this video, we touch upon the basics and importance of localization, mapping, SLAM and G-mapping. These concepts are essential to allow an autonomous mobile robot to perform complicated tasks that require successful navigation from point A to point B in static as well as dynamic environments. So let's start with a story to ease the learning process. Imagine that you land on a planet that does not have any named places or known landmarks. Yes, you do have eyes, your other sense organs and you can walk around. You are hungry and fortunately an alien on the planet can tell you the location of food and drinks. But how will he convey the position to you if there is no common coordinate frame of reference that both of you understand? How will you reach another location when you have no clue where you are with respect to that location? Here's one solution. Imagine a pair of coordinates like the latitudes and the longitudes we have on earth. Now based on this frame of reference, you not only know where you are on the planet, but also the relative position between you and the food. This is localization, the knowledge of your pose and orientation with respect to the world or the map coordinate system. Now there's still one more problem. You cannot directly see the food. So you don't know how to form a path from where you are to the food location. Yes, of course, you could randomly start moving in the direction of the food and try to avoid obstacles on the way. However, reactive navigation or bug algorithms of this kind has several disadvantages and unpredictable conditions. You could get trapped in several areas or even fall in the sea. Hence, in autonomous robotic systems, it's best to pre-plan an optimized path from the source to the destination and then try to stick to the path while avoiding dynamic obstacles. For this, you obviously need to have the knowledge about the obstacles and free spaces on the planet. Now, how will you make this possible? If you're given a chance to take a complete tour of the world, while simultaneously being aware of your location, you will be able to create a map with the information that you perceive using your senses and save the built map or the image in your mind for future path planning and navigation. This is called mapping. And once you have this map or an occupancy grid distinguishing between obstacles and the free spaces, you can now form an optimized path from any point A to point B. This is exactly how even GPS forms a path for you. It knows where you are, where you need to go with a common frame of reference and what the world looks like. Now that you understand the importance of localization and mapping, let's answer a few questions about the Game Changer Slam before we dive into understanding G-mapping. So firstly, why is SLAM considered a difficult process? Yes, it is because we are trying to perform two dependent tasks simultaneously and it becomes a chicken egg problem. Let me put this in very simple terms. When you have a map, it is easy for you to look around for features, landmarks, etc. and localize yourself. On the other hand, when you are localized, you can create a map of the surroundings and storing what you see as a 3D or a spatial model. However, when you neither know where you are nor what the world looks like, it becomes a very challenging task because now you are completely relying on probability distributions, uncertainties and estimation which can broadly get affected by different kinds of sensor noise. Hence, a robot needs a smart, complex brain like ours. And that's the SLAM algorithm, where the end goal is very simple. You need to know what the world looks like and where you are in it. Why is it needed? As we already know, it is essential for a robot to not just navigate autonomously and avoid obstacles, but also take critical decisions and perform tasks efficiently and safely. And one of the most important questions is how do we achieve SLAM? 
The very first step in SLAM is to gather appropriate information using the right sensors for the right application. We then use several techniques such as Kalman filter to fuse the data together after which it is a multi-step process where we perform feature matching, pose estimation and loop closure. And it's important to note that as we get new positional information, we match or align the known features and continuously improve the pose estimate. And when do we need SLAM? All the time. Because it's not possible for you to estimate what an environment looks like. Even if it's a known environment, there can be dynamic obstacles and you need SLAM to incrementally build a consistent map, irrespective of the type of environment it is in. You see the usage of SLAM in all industries ranging from indoors, outdoors, space, underwater and underground for a various number of applications. SLAM dates back from the 1980s and there are various approaches to solve the SLAM problem. But you need to make sure to choose the right approach for the right application. Some things that remain common in the different approaches is the output that you get is in the form of a dense 3D model or the position of different points in the environment, extracted features, landmarks. And finally, that model is used to estimate the pose. Do comment if you have any doubts or concerns.